Luis Santiago y soy miembro de Act Up New York. Don't worry about it, the rest of it is going to be English. And it's going to be English. We just want to spend a couple of minutes talking a little bit about the Latino Caucus because we haven't been spoken enough and we haven't been in the movies quite enough either. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, we wanted to pay homage to two individuals that represent the work done by many Latino and Latina activists and also by extension to many people of color and women activists. So, with me, Fernando Mariscal, one of the founders of the Latino Caucus, is going to start. Uh, hello, everybody. My name hello. is Fernando Mariscal. I'm uh, also an ACTA member. Oh, I'm sorry. As you can see, I'm not uh, good with this stuff. Um, okay. Sounds better? Yes. yes. I guess if you ever wonder where we were, uh, we the Latinas and Latinos, we, we were always part of ACTAP. Um, some of us are still here now. Some of the people came from other states just because we had a small reunion. Um, and then we decided to be part of this celebration for the 30 years. Quickly, I, I don't, I'm not going to go through the whole history <laughs> like we have before. I think we have enough uh, of the history of ACTAP from different ways. And um, this group actually started in 19... 89, it was like a, kind of like an affinity group at the beginning, who grew into a larger group of Latino identified um, people from Latin America, like myself, but also US born Americans who identified themselves as Latinos or Latinas. And the group grew at a certain point up to probably more than 100 members. Uh, we were always part of different actions, whether we were part of committees or different communities or Diva TV or any other group, affinity group within ACTAP. Sometimes we were separate and we were also organized some of the activities uh, on our own. But we were always part of this uh, group and we are always very proud to be part of the ACTAP history. I'm going to pass this to my ACTAP member so he can tell you a little bit more about us. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go over what we think are the four main barriers that the Latino Caucus broke and helped make this movement a better movement. The first barrier is a racial ethnic barrier within the ACT UP organization. By raising its voice within ACT UP and inject injecting itself actively into the decision making process and the strategic discussions within ACT UP committees, it helped turn a majority white organization into a more diverse and inclusive political entity, one that better reflected the communities affected by the pandemic. The second barrier is the barrier of HIV AIDS in the Latino community barrier. By confronting political, religious, and civic leaders in New York, it forced them to acknowledge HIV AIDS as a health crisis within the Latino communities and put HIV AIDS in their agenda. By publicly calling out the inefficiencies of the service rendered by the government institutions and not-for-profits in heavily Latino sections of the city and the state, it shook the Latino political establishment and it pressured them to develop more efficient responses to the community needs. The third barrier is the barrier of the LGBT Latinos within the Latino community. By participating with other Latino LGBT organizations in pride events, national and ethnic parades, and other communal activities, it forced the Latino community to recognize the existence of LGBT Latinos and stress the need to see HIV AIDS as a health crisis. And fourth and last, last barrier is the national international barrier. By engaging and collaborating with activists from Latin America and the Caribbean, developing initiatives for sending medicines, sharing information, supporting LGBT groups and AIDS, HIV AIDS organizations, and even in some instances, traveling abroad to support local activists denouncing their governments in actions on HIV AIDS, it pioneered HIV transnational activism. Thank you. So now we want to pay homage uh, to um, Latino and Latina activists, Marina Alvarez and Juan Mendez. My name is Rita Alvarez.
about Marina Alvarez, una semblanza. Marina Alvarez was born on May 22nd, 1952, and passed away on January 29, 2016. She lived 63 years, full 63 years. As a Puerto Rican woman and Latina woman living with HIV AIDS, Marina was a survivor as she confronted many challenges with great courage and dignity. She survived poverty and economic abuse, incarceration, addiction, gender violence, homelessness. As a single mom, she educated and provided for her family. She was a magnificent and exceptional human being and a fierce fighter for justice and equality, especially for the Bronx community. On January 23rd, 1991, on the day of desperation, Marina Alvarez became an AIDS activist. As an active member of the Latino Caucus in ACT UP and crossed over to, the, to be a dynamic um, force within the ACT UP Women Committee, amongst other affinity groups. She was the first Latina ever addressed the International AIDS Conference in Amsterdam. And in the summer of 1997, she appeared as the front cover page of the first edition of Post en Español. She became a national AIDS treatment advocate and a peer educator. She was a true voice in breaking the silence for many women and people affected and afflicted by the pandemic. She rose the bar by addressing the issues that mattered to her. From radio, television, documentaries, and as a video producer, she inspired many by being an instrumental force in breaking down the stigma and barriers of AIDS in our community. community. Marina Presente! Marina! Hello everyone. I'm going to talk about another emblematic member of the Latino Caucus. His name is Juan Mendez. Juan was born in Puerto